Okay, um, this is a re-record of Module 24, Part 1. I noticed while reviewing my um, videos that there were a couple of videos that did not upload or did not download properly, so I'm going to have to go back in and redo a few of them. Um, this first module was where they start to talk about graphing. And so for the first topic, all they're saying is graphing a parabola of the form y equals ax squared plus c. And so my example is to graph this. So this equation follows the form as described in the, in the topic title. And so the way you do parabolas is you just use uh, points around the origin zero. So zeros here in the middle and then I picked two values to the left of zero, and I picked two values to the right of zero. I put them in this order. It really doesn't matter what order they're in because once you plot all the five points, you're going to have to draw a parabola regardless, okay? So it doesn't really necessarily matter the order that you put negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Because when you plug in negative two, whether I do it up here or I do it down there, when you plug in negative two, you're gonna still get the same y value, okay? So this point, negative two, five, will still be a point here on the graph, regardless if you plot that point first or if you plot that point last or you plot it at some point in the middle, okay? Um, the negative one, when you plug in negative one into this equation, right, we end up with the y value of negative one. And you can always type these in your calculator to verify that these are in fact the correct y values. Um, but once you have all your set of y values, you just plot those on the graph and then you draw the parabola shape. So it does need to look like a u if it's opening upward. And you'll know it's up opening upward if you have the one point here, which is the peak or the valley, and then the numbers are getting wider as they go up, so it should open up. Whereas this problem, when we plugged in each of these values, we ended up with negative eight, one, four, one, and negative eight. Notice the peak is here, and then the two y values get bigger as you go downward, so the parabola would end up actually facing downward, okay? Now, this topic is different from the previous topic. Look at the form of the equation. This form was different, okay? I had a number added outside the square like I did before. Here they're calling it K instead of calling it C. It doesn't matter what label you give it. The fact is, is there's still a number being added um, outside the square. What I don't have is a number being multiplied in the front, but I now have a number being added or subtracted on the inside. And when you're adding or subtracting something on the inside, you have to actually do the opposite operation, okay? Because we are originally supposed to be using these x values, but because of an adding or subtracting inside this parentheses here, what it's gonna do is it's going to horizontally translate the graph, meaning that the whole entire graph is either gonna move to the left or the entire graph is gonna move to the right. It depends on what sign you have in there, okay? And it actually works the opposite of your intuition. So even though this would have a minus number, it actually doesn't move it toward the minuses, it moves it in the other direction towards the positives. So what you need to think of is do the opposite operation of what's inside here to figure out whether it's gonna go left or right. Well, here I have x minus two, so what that is I need to do the opposite operation, which would be plus two, to each of those original x values that I would have put in my chart, okay? So normally I would have put these x values in the chart and then put them in and found the y values and use that, okay? However, because of this number inside the parentheses, it's going to shift these x values. And how do you shift them? Use the opposite operation here. So since this is a minus two, I'm gonna add two to each coordinate, okay? To each x value. So negative two plus two is zero, negative one plus two is one, zero plus two is two, one plus two is three, and two plus two is four. 
Once you have all of your x values, you're simply plugging them in here to find your corresponding y values. Now I do use my programming capability in my calculator to do this plugging in part, okay? So what I like to do is I like to do x minus 2 squared plus 3. Put my function in there, but I'm going to ignore the first answer because x was stored as something in my calculator. I don't know what. x was stored as negative 1. And you notice here I don't need to plug in negative 1 for x. And that's just exactly what it did. When I typed in this expression and hit enter, what it did was plug negative 1 in here and calculate that expression to give me 12. Okay. What I want to do is I want to plug in these x values. So I'm going to say 0 for my first one, store as x. And I'm going to hit enter to save it. So now the x is the value 0. I'm going to go back up to highlight my expression so that I don't have to keep retyping it. Enter to copy it. Hit enter to evaluate it. And I get the number 7. Going on to the next x value. 1 store x. Enter to save. Highlight expression. Hit enter to copy. Hit enter to evaluate. I get 4. Next x value. 2 store x. Hit enter to save, highlight the expression, hit enter to copy, hit enter to evaluate. I get 3. 3 store x, hit enter to save, go up, highlight your expression, hit enter to copy, hit enter to evaluate. I get 4. And finally the last one, I'll do it a little bit faster, and we get 7. Okay. That's where these values are coming from even though you don't see any work here like you did the first time okay and I actually did the same thing for this one as well okay program this expression in a calculator start storing all your x values and you'll get there okay now here it's the same top concept right but notice that inside the parentheses I now have plus three so what that means is I need to do the opposite operation to all my original x values. So here's my original x values I would have used. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Those are what should have been here. But because there's a plus 3 in there, I had to minus 3 to each of those 5 x values. And these are the results. Negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. 0 minus 3 is negative 3. 2 minus 3 is negative 1, right? Then we're plugging these values into this expression and I followed the same thing I'll just verify for one of them I'm gonna do parentheses x plus 3 squared plus 1 again I'm gonna ignore the first value because apparently 4 was the last value that I plugged in and 4 is not one of the ones that I need to plug in here so I'm gonna ignore that 50 I'm gonna do negative 5 stores x highlight my expression hit enter twice and I get the value 5 okay and if you do the same thing for all of these x values you'll be able to calculate those y values once you plot all those points you draw the parabola and Alex once you have all the points graphed in there you should be able to get the graphing function um, and then it should uh, color in or draw in your um, parabola shape now this topic is matching parent, parent graphs Unfortunately, there's no way to teach this or to show you how to do this. What they really want you to do here is memorize this, okay? And it will serve you very well if you do in fact memorize this. Like you just have this in your brain. This is what these graphs look like, okay? So that's what they want you to tie together. They want you to tie together that if you have an x squared function, it's going to look like a parabola. Okay, and if you graph exactly y equals x squared, it looks exactly like this. They want you to know if you're graphing a square root function, it's going to look like half of a sideways parabola, right? It's like I took this side and flipped it over to the side and got rid of the other side, right? There's no other part of the parabola down here. So they want you to know what a line looks like, right? If I don't have any exponents on x, it should look like a line. If I don't have any x's, just a constant, it should look like a horizontal line. If I have an x cube, it should look like, I call these a chair, 
but it, it's basically like a downward parabola on one side and an upward parabola on the other side okay but it has like this little wiggle in the middle um, the absolute value of x should look like a v the fraction 1 over x looks like a little curve going this way in the first quadrant and then another little curve going like that in the third quadrant if you put x squared at the bottom well then guess what all of these negatives when i square them they become positive right so that's why the bottom part that was here in this graph is now up here for this graph okay so you really have to just memorize these you really need to memorize these Start putting them on note cards, start using flashcards so that you can identify the function and be able to tell me what kind of function it is, whether it's a quadratic, a square root, a linear. I'll write those labels here. So this one's a quadratic, a square root, a linear. This one is a... Um, rational with quadratic denominator this one's a rational with linear denominator this one is an absolute value this one is a cubic because of the cube and then this one is a horizontal line Okay, you really need to know what kind of function it is, what it looks like as an equation, and what it looks like as a graph. Now, these are what they call the parent functions. Meaning, if I start adding or subtracting things inside these parent functions, or I start adding and subtracting things outside the parent functions, if I start multiplying by things, inside or outside or I start throwing in negatives inside or outside it's going to affect the graph some way or another okay and we'll talk about how it affects the graphs um, in the next videos okay but just know this is like the basic and then as the the uh, functions get more complicated it'll do it'll manipulate those graphs a little bit